How are we going everybody? Hope you're having a great day so far and I hope you're enjoying Craig's little segments that we've been filming there with the apples, the heritage apples tasting. Now I spoke to you about this air layering pods the other day and I said I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. We're going to do this now, well actually after we come back from Craig's because we've still got some beautiful apples to taste. Then come back with me here and I'll show you how you can grow your own little tree off a tree and then you can transplant it into the ground. Well, if you see how many tomatoes I've taken off this thing and it's still cool. out. That's fantastic. It's ridiculous. Look at, that. Look at that. Just enjoy. This is what you can do. You don't and need this, a big garden. Just a little, this is a planter box. Yeah, and this this uh, this doesn't get much more sun than around about um, about twelve o'clock. That's as much sun as it gets. That's it. And That's it. So it really doesn't need direct direct sunlight. It needs heat. You know, when you do your research. Yeah. Tomatoes are vines yeah. and they grow on the outskirts of a yeah. forest yeah. up through the trees yeah. and the shrubs. Exactly. And they use the cover of those yeah. to stay out of the sun. Yeah. So, the, so yeah. the ones that I've grown on the south side yeah. of the house, yeah. on the left hand side yeah. of my path and here where they're getting shade, are still matter. happening. Yeah. The, the ones that are out in the full sun, sun, which are the next beds, the afternoon guess what? sun cooked. They're all spent. Yeah, they're all cooked. And we've That's had, the same a, we've had a mild summer. We've had a mild, imagine if it wasn't a mild yeah. summer. It's actually quite harsh for sun, isn't it? Regardless oh, yeah. of what plant you have that's tolerant to the sun, it's yeah. still, you see uh, the damage is, how damaging it can be. You know, I, I, um, I, I sort of say this on a lot of the work, the um, workshops that I'm running online, yeah. um, that our, our Australian conditions are very harsh. We weren't very clever when we came to Australia because we brought our food system with us. Mm. None of these plants are native. No, no. So we've got a very harsh soil that yep. the natives love, but the food plants don't. Mm. And the, the sun here is just terribly yeah. harsh. Yeah. It's a bit Cooks like them. that with fruit trees. Yeah. You know, we think we get cold winters, but yeah. we don't. No, the fruit trees need You know, they struggle a little bit yeah. to get that, that, uh, that chill period. set. Yeah. Yeah, um, to put them uh, dormant so yeah. they can get ready for spring. That's it. And that's the problem we're having with our trees. And as you said in years before, when we talk about pruning fruit trees, if you do a winter prune only, the tree is never really dormant. No. So you're actually shocking you're just the growth. growth all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So you're not getting your fruit, but rather you're getting a lot of new growth on it. And yeah. I mention it all the time, and the fellow here has shown me a lot in the past years, so we share ideas and advice and tips, and hopefully you guys learn from it as well. Yeah, that's I it. don't know about growing tomatoes up in a vine like that into your on, gardens. Mate, that's, that's like foot tall, mate. <laughs> it is. You should drill a couple of holes in your downpipe if it ever well, rains again. It's starting to get to the point where I might have to spider it along the, well, the, the lines Christmas lights. I'm not sure. <laughs> but it is starting to get there. And of course, again, utilising space, I'm yeah. forever looking for a place to grow some food. So uh, even hanging baskets with a bit uh, of lettuce. Take out part of the house, mate, you, know? you reckon? So. Take the roof tiles. <laughs> no, we won't do that. So are we harvesting? What are we doing? No. We're going to show you how to... <laughs> no. It turn. might be over. No. <laughs> but I'm going to show you how you can grow your own. Yeah, that's it. So what are we doing? So the first, the first thing is sterilise. Yep. Because you never know what you've got on <laughs> your blades. From the last prune? Well, yeah. From time, yeah. You've got to become a gunslinger. Out. Have both. Okay. Don't pull one out without the other. Okay. Before you go from plant to plant or tree to tree. That's all right, it. now, these water shoot growths. Yep, all that there. Yep. Um, too, too tall. Yep. So what I do is I count up about four or five buds. Yep. And I undercut yep. the bud. Okay. Leaving a bit of that. All right, but if we bring it up closer to the camera, <coughs> an undercut is when you're cutting right below the bud above. Yeah. That's what you're saying. So, so what happens then? So let's let's pull some of this away so yep. you can see. Yep. Undercut. Like that. Okay. And now what we have? Well what's going to happen is this is going to die back. Okay. Yeah. So what happens uh, yeah. is that the dieback is caused because the bud can't draw enough sap high yep. enough to yep. heal, heal that over. Yep. And instead of getting a dominant bud ends on. Yep which would normally cause that to grow. Into a shoot? It doesn't. Okay. And if it does get the bud, on, bud enzymes, yep. it sends enzymes down to stop these from growing. Okay. That's why when you prune like that, yep. that this bud grows. Yes, because it, it actually So you want to stop that, so you actually yeah. cut, cut that off. And leave a, a short That's stub it. there on top. Now, when you threaten anything in the plant kingdom with death, it, it flowers. To produce seed. Which means that it won't do that. Next time around. Next time. Yeah. And that becomes a short, Fruit spur. Yep. 
where you get fruit. So next time that won't grow anymore. That's it. And every year from there on, if you maintain it properly, you'll always get fruit Correct. off those spurs. Correct. So that's called undercut yeah. on the bud. And if you've got yeah. a tree that you're doing a summer prune on now, this is the best time to do it when you can yeah. see everything Absolutely. after you've harvested everything. Yeah, generally. So, now with apples, obviously these are going to be late. Yep. So some of these I will bend or break. Yep. Um, and then you go and clean them up. And then later on I clean them up. You suggest that with any yeah. other fruit tree? Uh, apples and pears. Apples and pears, there you go I folks. wouldn't do it with others. If you've got an apple and pear, do an undercut. <laughs> if it's growing too many yep. water shoots, out of control, not enough fruit. Secrets of producing more yep. spurs or fruit bearing spurs. An undercut by Craig Castry. Manissi. <laughs> so we've tasted... Egremont Russet. Egrem Egr Egremont. Egremont Russet. Yep. It's very difficult to describe, but can you imagine trying to sell one of those on the supermarket shelf? They'll never sell. Well, people would look at that and go, are you serious? And as I'm eating it, it's reminding me of apple pie, because hmm. it's not a full-blown apple sweet like this. No. It's got a totally different full flavour. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's, and it's, uh, uh, it's remarkable. Now you're in for a treat, because... I've got to remind myself. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the Arcane. This is Arcane. Yep. Huh? You want some? <laughs> no, you. Come oh, on, you got to try that, mate. <laughs> try it, mate. Let's have a look at the expression. <laughs> We're watching our videographer eat the Akane. What do you reckon? Say something. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> That's all we get. Sounds like Con the Fruiterer. Beautiful. Couple of those. Doesn't matter. <laughs> He's got his eyeballs on it. Get your eyes off it. <laughs> so what are we eating here now? This is gala. Not royal gala. gala. Just gala. So not the royal gala that no. you find in your local. And let me tell you, this you're in for a treat. Wow. <laughs> it is incredible, isn't it? Now, this now is a, I this don't is understand a very why. Adult moment for me, mate. I, I do not understand why we've taken those off the supermarket shelves, and I'll tell you why because they're thin-skinned. They, they don't travel easily. well. They get they and that's get the bruised, problem. And, and what they've done is they've put royal gala in place, which has a much thicker skin, but I don't reckon it's got half the quality of the. Uh, Nowhere near the, the, apple. the quality, mate. Can I say I am really tired of being delegated and dictated by our transport and packing and shelving mm. environment. That's what governs what we eat. Yeah. Yep. What makes us money? Hmm. That's a, it's a fact. Anybody prove me otherwise? Hmm. So what we eat and you find in your local stores, and be it all trying to be as clean and healthy as possible, which we know is almost virtually impossible when you're doing it on a grand scale commercial level. Hmm. So all the chemicals and preservatives and additives, insecticides, fungicides, the whole list goes on, are inclusive of that, and they try and control it to the best ability. Hmm. But bottom line is, it is governed by that. Yeah. So we miss out on all these wonderful flavours that yeah. exist by nature, Mother Nature gives us. Mm. And us humans turn around and dictate, no, nah, we're just gonna eat that because I can't make two bucks on that, but I can make it on this. Mm. That annoys me. Yeah, it's That's ridiculous. why we're here today talking about apples yeah. like this and we can taste them, mate. And, and picked off the, off the tree oh. when they're ripe. And by the way, to tell when something's ripe, it makes no difference what sort of piece of yeah. fruit it is. Yeah, with it's a, a half, half twist. With a half twist, if it comes off, it's, it's ripe, right. it's ready to go. Yeah. If it's not, leave it on. Yeah. If you twist it, don't, don't be too scared if you twist it and it doesn't come off. Don't try and yank it off. No, no, no. Just leave it. Because yep. next time you go, it could be only a couple of days later where you go back to that same fruit and it might just come straight off. Correct. And it's ready. So, Correct. so I'm that's gonna, gala. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to try that. You can't, you can't go home without having tasted a piece of gala, mate. Oh. <laughs> that's magnificent. Mm. That's every bit as good as the uh, Akane. I mean, they just very different apples. Magnificent. Beautiful. So this one <laughs> is our Kingston Black. Now these are a dual purpose apple. So um, they're good for cider mm -hmm. as well as they are eating. But they're again a different type of apple. So very. So they're slightly larger in size by nature, but mm. this is off that multi-graft you got yep. there. Yep. I mean, it's, it's giving you a good crop there yep. regardless. So we've got another apple up the back there that's got six varieties on it. And that actually has Look Fuji up much the back. lighter it is. It's yeah. very white flesh, this one. Yep. I know there's discolouring, that's what happens, but the... Oh, they oxidise. Yeah, you know, so. straight away. With yeah. Oh, it cuts like butter. Mm. So different again. Yeah, completely. It reminds me of a Golden Delicious slice. So, so, so sort of anything with the word delicious in them mm -hmm. is a cider apple. 
It's a cider apple. I, I had no idea that that was the case, but that's, really? I'm told that mm -hmm. that's that's the scenario. So Kingston Black is a cider apple. So um, so that flavour of that delicious. Any delicious apples, mm. that type of flavour is that's mm. what lends itself to being a cider apple. I can taste so, it. Yeah. It'd make a beautiful cider. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What do they normally make cider in bulk? Um, oh, the, 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 there's about 13 different varieties of cider apples that are mm. labelled cider for, apples. For that purpose, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. That are generally not terribly good eating, you know. But, but um, this is. That, that's yeah. That's why I've got it on that's there. That's why you, you said know, dual so, purpose. Yeah, yeah. Are they all the same? Yeah, they're they're all Kingston Three. Blacks. So, beautiful. Yeah. And what have um, we got here now? No, that's that's another the, uh, another gala, and this one's not ripe, unfortunately. Um, it's uh, it has come off. It's an opal essent. Again, so, does that, will that change colour even more? Uh, yeah, it, it will eventually. But uh, there is bit. one left that I've got there. That's a blue pan, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go and pick it. While he's going there, this is a <clears> gorgeous <throat> little apple. One of these middle dwarf apples, crab apple maybe. <laughs> no, that's a tomato. <laughs> Did you like those apples? They're to die for heritage apples. You're not going to find them anywhere in the supermarkets. If you need some of those little cyan woods that we're talking about, keep in contact with us and we'll try to organise something with Craig and myself to get some out there because we don't want to lose that variety. Now back to this. You can also do air layering with citrus and fruit trees. Fruit trees as well. And I'm going to do one here with our citrus tree. <laughs> Vader's running around like a little madman. Uh, okay, what I've got here is my little pod. This is my little air layering pipe, that's the small one that is, and I've added some propagating mix in here. You would normally, I suppose it would be better to use peat moss or um, not sphagnum moss, but peat moss, but I'm using propagating. It's still okay. I'm sure this is going to work. Now what we need to do is expose the cambium layer and on this lemon that I've got, it's a Eureka. I'm going to take this lower branch here. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap this around the branch itself, clip it on tight, and position it but before we do that what we need to do is take about a two centimeter width of bark all the way around so we technically are ring barking this branch now if we don't put the soil on to keep the moisture in place <laughs> don't mind the doggies in the background Kara showing her who's the boss still because he's a bit small hey <laughs> Vader relax mate <laughs> Jack wants to play ball all right if you don't put soil around where you ring bark, technically you're going to kill this plant. So the moisture in this, and I've hydrated this propagating mix already, it needs to be hydrated. If you're using peat moss, the same thing, hydrated. Pressed it in firmly so it's ready to go. If you hydrate it, it'll act as a conduit to keep the rest of it hydrated. But at the same time, because we've exposed the cambium layer of taking it all off, it's going to start, instead of healing, because there's soil around it, it's actually going to grow roots. So nice and simple. Unfortunately, folks, one in a million times this will happen. We weren't rolling when I actually did the cut, the most important part. So come in nice and close, and I can see the little red lights on this time. Come in nice and close, because I've already done the cut. Now I'm going to have to mimic the cut that I just did that you missed out on. So what I did is basically do a two centimeter cut. Look at that. Eh? <laughs> so that was in there. Just imagine that was there. And I'm not going to do another one because I don't have enough branches on this little tree. So I did a complete cut all the way around like that on this and then one on this side all the way around like that then i did a horizontal cut and i peeled it off with my fingernail you can use the back side of the blade if you like then you've got a two or they're about two centimeter in length exposed wood there now what we're going to do before we cover it is we need to apply a little bit of rutex gel now see his camera wasn't rolling and I didn't bring my little paintbrush, so I'm using my little finger here. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of this Rutex gel hormone to stimulate root development. Cover it all over like that nicely, right? And then all we need to do is place this over the top. And I've got a little lug on this on the bottom of it. There's a little lug here. You can't see it. That actually grabs hold of the branch, it stops it from sliding up and down. Position it in the middle, like that carefully, wrap it over the top, and press it firm tight. There's a little lever on here you can wrap over, it stops it from coming apart. There we are, I can feel moisture coming out everywhere. Press it firmly like that, it should clip in. You can put some Ziploc ties or a little bit of twine to hold it tight in case it does move, but generally speaking on a small scale like this, it shouldn't go anywhere. You need to hydrate it. You there? 
you need a hydrator so this was already hydrated but monitor it and carefully add some water inside here to keep it moist you don't want it to dry out otherwise it's not going to work so that's the only part you need to monitor and a little spray if you like with your bottle top sprinkler or even with a spray nozzle from a spray gun squirt some water into that to hydrate and wait four six eight weeks we don't know but we'll monitor it through the course of the year as it grows it shouldn't move we can test it out open it up gently after about a month or two and in the meantime we sit back and wait check out our website it's a big weekend again folks we've got 35 percent off all our stock online uh, the code word is Apple. That's right. Apple for your discount to so activate your discount. Vasilisgarden.com and the autumn packs. They are still online because popular demand people wanted them. Get them while they're hot because they're going to sell out very soon. From me, Vasily, I'd see.